So I've just driven down to a river, which is about five minutes from my house, to film how not to get lost in zero viz. Now, the number one thing to do really is to take a compass with you. And what have I forgotten? My bloody compass. So I've got to head back, go grab it, and uh, oh yeah, I'll be back with you in a second. You know what really sucks? It's getting lost in nil viz. Apart from it being completely unproductive and you're losing valuable bottom time, it kind of makes you look like a fool. So I want to give you a few insider industry tips to keep you orientated when you might not be able to see anything. All right, well, let's go for a wander and see if we can find some water. Why listen to me? What makes me the person that you should be taking advice from? Well. You don't have to, but knowledge is power and whatever resources you have under your belt when it comes down to certain situations, why not have as much information as possible? So I'm Jed, uh, I've been commercially diving for the last 12 years, been offshore for the last 7 years, uh, I've got a SAT ticket, an air ticket, uh, I'm a mechanical dive tech and I'm also a dive systems dive systems assurance auditor. So there's a couple of things that are industry standards. Taking a compass is probably one of the most important ones that you'll ever come across. Part of that is also learning how to read a compass properly. Uh, I've seen plenty of guys being given a bearing and they go the opposite way, 180 degrees from where they're supposed to be going to where they're actually going. So that's a key ingredient. I guess the next one would have to be uh, setting up swim lines. Swim lines are very important. So a swim line from the surface to the job, uh, that goes without saying, that's a, uh, a common trait throughout pretty much all diving. Uh, but also a swim line from B to C and C to D and D to E. If you're working with a tool basket in the water uh, and you can't find it, you've gone the wrong way from a job. And, uh, it just removes the guesswork. The next one is probably quite an obvious one for helping build your situational awareness in the water about where you are is using your umbilical. Your umbilical may not always lead straight back to the job if you've been fouled up or if the tide's running you might have a bit of a, a bow in it but generally speaking if the top side can come up on your slack then you've got a, a reasonable indication about where to go. Always communicate. Always communicate to the supervisor if you're lost. Like, it may be embarrassing. Sorry, I got a cobweb in my face. It may be embarrassing to declare that you're lost, but at the end of the day, you know, you're scared of looking like a fool. But the only fool is the person that wastes their bottom time walking around in circles, not letting them know that they need help to get on the job. And, and pretty much, finish a dive completely unproductive without having done anything. If you want to be considered an asset to a team and please the higher ups, I guess the supervisor or the OCM or whoever's on the job, you need to be productive and there's nothing wrong with singing out and letting them know that you need help finding the job. The other thing is the guys who are tendering you on the surface, they can spot your bubbles a mile away. So. It might be as easy as face your umbilical and turn right and you're five meters from the job whereas you think you're in the middle of nowhere so just remember always communicate we found some water now it's not the open ocean which you know most of the diving is performed in but it'll do this is the river spree in berlin uh, and being in the center of the european continent there's not much else uh, in terms of options to go diving in so I'm not going to go diving specifically with uh, compressed air, but I will get in the water and show you a few things about Nilviz that hopefully builds your repertoire. What's up with all the gear you might ask? Well, I don't actually own a weight belt, so this is going to do the job of keeping me down in the water. Um, bit of kit here, but It'll do the trick. So another key ingredient to keeping yourself orientated in the water is water current. More than likely always going to have some sort of tide. 
Now, if you take note of which direction that tide's coming from, use that as an orientation. Right, I've got to the job. Water's coming from my right. Do the job. All right, now I need to turn back and I need to go back the way I've come, or the tool basket is in this direction. Turn around, have the water coming from left to right. And with water current, what happens is if you're on a sandy bottom, it creates ripples, like little mini sand dunes. Now, those ripples are always created by tide or water current and they run perpendicular to it. So as the water runs over it, it'll create bumps. Now, if you're diving inshore, even offshore, and you see these sandy little dunes and they run in lines, right, so now you've got a 50-50 direction as to whether you're going into shore or you're going offshore. Now that's handy in recreational diving as well as commercial diving, probably more recreational diving, but it's worth a mention. This is a perfect example of shit viz. Just to give you an idea about what we're looking at. And it's pretty bloody cold too. Light. Uh, light's a great indicator about direction. Uh, light doesn't change very fast. Uh, you could use sunlight. Sunlight's always a good one, especially when you know that the sun always rises in the east and sets in the west. Um, if you're down underneath, you can usually, usually tell that there's some sort of light. I mean, unless you're diving in at night time, but even then, if you're on a work site, you might have lights from a wharf, you might have lights from a bridge, you might have lights from a work boat. If you're in set, you might have the lights from the bell. We're going to try and give you an example now of what light looks like in Zero Viz. Now, it is approximately 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and the sun is still overhead, but it's on a westerly sort of angle just because of the afternoon. Um, I won't point the camera directly in the sun, but it's that way. And so when we go down underwater, you might actually notice that you can still tell the direction of light. All right, we'll give it a go. Yeah, it's pretty bloody cold. So I'll have to check back over the footage and just double check that that's a, uh, that's a real thing that I'm talking about. But usually, usually you can spot which way the sun is in the water uh, and you can use that to orientate yourself. I wanted to give you an example about using the compass uh, and unfortunately because I had my dive magnet in my tool bag earlier on, uh, it wasn't playing the game that I wanted it to play. So I'm going to do a little example you here. On the surface before you get in the water you set your bearing. Set your bearing by pointing the compass at the job and spinning the bezel around until your forks in the front here capture the north or north is on zero. On the center ring of the compass it's got a whole lot of numbers. They're actually the reciprocal bearings they're not the real bearings of north. If you can see north there is 180 well, if you set the bezel on north to zero, then you've always got a direct line to your job. Now, if you stray off in the water, all right, now where am I going? All right, well, look, let me first of all, let me get north captured. All right, excuse the shadow. North is captured. All right, that's my job. Boom. It's getting bloody cold and I might get out because I'm not getting paid to do this. So <laughs> yeah, if you like the content in this, give us a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And I'm going to start putting out more videos about the commercial diving industry, about diving information in general, uh, and try and help educate those who are interested in this subject in the industry so click subscribe and yeah hit that notification bell and we'll see you on the next one cheers